Well, welcome to our Tuesday live leadership chats. Today, I'm talking with the wise Brian Holden, who is a youth consultant with the Anglican Diocese of Melbourne, and he's also one of our CCI coaches and trainers. And today we are talking about developing the next generation of leaders. My name is Kylie Butler, and I'm a part of Christian Coaching Institute, which is Australia's leading Christian coaching organisation. We've been coaching and training leaders in coaching for over 10 years now. So, Brian, welcome. Thanks, Kylie. Great to be here. It's good to be. It is good to have you as well. Before we jump into today's topic, Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, what your role is, and what you love doing? Uh, so, I'm Brian. I love playing with Zoom and I've been doing online learning for quite a while and I'm so, uh, as much as you can ever be thankful for COVID, I'm so thankful that I no longer have to start with teaching people how to Zoom. I just get to have fun with Zoom, uh, which I'll probably stop doing now and turn into my normal self. Yeah, I think you're kicking over. It should, there we go. That is the normal me. Uh, I am I am still just as wise, just not as That's old. True. That is good. Now, Brian, today we're talking around that idea of developing young leaders, but how did you get into leadership formation? Like, what, why is this such a big passion for you? Uh, because I used to be one. I used to be a young leader being formed and... When I went through the journey and, you know, I did the, the typical kind of crash and burn and pick myself up a few times and I got to the end of that and I went, there's got to be a better way of doing this. Um, it, it's, there's got to be a more deliberate way. Mm-hmm. And talking to most leaders I've ever spoken to, they all can tell you the story that nearly ended up with them out of ministry forever or did end up with them out of ministry forever and so yeah I wanted to figure out ways that to make that happen less and to make better leaders yeah so what's it you talked around earlier when we were chatting offline that sort of that relational leadership versus structured leadership tell us how what is the difference between those two yeah so there was a really big push um, 20 years ago, probably a little bit more, to do a lot more relational leadership formation. Mm-hmm. And I think my theory is, and this is not just my theory, there's other people that have written stuff about it, particularly in Christian circles, but in whole of life, we used to take our leaders away. Mm-hmm. Be that in the workplace, you know, you would finish work and then they would go to what often referred to as a middle room they would go and they would smoke cigars and have a glass of whiskey together before they went home (laughs) Uh, at seminary they would live on site and so you had the functional leadership formation as you learned to do Mm. but you also had character and relational formation and as that started to dissipate we lost it we realized we needed something and so there was a swing towards relational leadership formation where it's like hey let's live life together Mm. And I remember the first kind of person that really trained me in in leadership, Mm. I would go to their house for dinner at least once a week. Mm. Um, We would hang out and he's still actually one of my best friends through to today. And so the relational leadership really focused on that part of leadership. And I think we almost swung a little bit too far the other way Mm. where it's like, as long as we've got relationship, you'll learn from me, you'll watch me do and we lost some of the structure of it. Mm. And so structural leadership is more deliberate in where are the areas this person needs forming and growing and how can we actually feed into that? And I've now come to land, you know, like any good pendulum, somewhere re- around the middle where actually you need both of these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what are the core things of the structured leadership formation model? Uh, it depends which book you read. Uh, <laughs> and even then, there's, you know, there's 
different authors who kind of say, oh, it's more this than this, it's yeah. more that than this. Uh, the model that I'm using at the moment, and you know, I reserve the right to change this next week, <laughs> is to do with the five Cs. And again, depending on who you read, the Cs change. Hmm. Um, but they kind of focus on things like character as being a central pillar. Um, yeah. You know, if you develop a great leader and they've got no character or bad character or flawed character, yeah. um, that's where big falls are going to happen. You know, in all the years of coaching and leadership stuff that I've done, I don't think I've ever seen a church fall over based on the pastor's interpretation of Ecclesia in the Greek. <laughs> uh, where I've seen it fail, where I've seen it go bad is in that raw character stuff. Mm. Um, so it's around self-understanding, self-acceptance, self-moderation, self-change. All of that sort of stuff is where we start in mm. a structured model. And, you know, you can start that. That works for young leaders, but it also works. Um, you know, I've been doing some coaching with some older folk around this model and they're getting just as much out of that character mm. stuff. So that's the first C. Uh, the second one is around competency. So mm -hmm. the skills that you need, um, you know, I've, I've used this example a fair few times. I remember standing ankle deep in water in the bottom basement of a church where the playgroup was and just sort of going, Bible college did not prepare me for what to do here. <laughs> um, so true. Like, I, I don't know, who do I, and going, I don't have the skills mm. to manage a, a site, you know, especially in some churches, it tends to be a bit run down, tends to be a little mm. bit difficult. You know, I don't have the skills to run meetings. And so, you know, the second phase is around those really core competencies, all the managements, you know, time management, people mm. management, conflict management. Um, that's a really big one. I don't think we do well mm. in the church, but, when you have those competencies and when you have the character piece, I think that's where confidence comes from. Mm -hmm. And a lot of leaders sort of feel really short on confidence. Mm -hmm. And if, if they can understand who they are and the skills they have, their confidence skyrockets mm -hmm. and not to, you know, overconfident, arrogant way, yeah, because yeah. that's where your character base is. <laughs> um, but it actually helps leaders really be able to do some of the simple stuff well um so then we we kind of move on to capacity so yeah. we have a finite amount of resources as people how do we make the best of those so mm -hmm. even simple things like you know physical management of your own body sleep mm -hmm. boundaries spiritual practices all that sort of stuff builds our capacity to keep doing the work we do and to do it well Mm. Um, and then the last two really really quickly and simply is chemistry how do you fit in your team yeah and again that comes out of the character stuff and uses some yeah. of the competency stuff and this is why it's a build on model um how do you manage up how do you vision yeah. really well and how do you fit in a vision really well uh for me as a you know if you use disc high d enneagram eight me fitting in someone else's vision is something I really had to work on, uh, not just blazing my own way. Uh, so, you know, that chemistry stuff's really important. And the last one is around calling. Mm. So the vocation of leadership. Mm. And it's not just a role. It's not just a job that we do. Mm. Um, in nearly everything I've ever done, for, for some reason, mm. I just end up in leadership. Um, and it's because that is a vocation that is part of who I am more than a job that I do. Yeah. And so you get the opportunity of working with so many younger leaders um, with particularly your leadership role at the moment. What are you noticing amongst younger leaders at the moment? Yeah. So I don't know if I said it at the start, I work for the Anglican Diocese of Melbourne uh, and I'm the youth consultant and it's a confusing title. I don't consult youth. I don't consult for youth. I help youth ministries in the Diocese of Melbourne to grow and flourish. Mm. Um, so one thing I'm noticing is 
a response to COVID. Um, our leaders are super tired and that's at all levels. So I also, yeah. you know, through CCI, I coach other leaders as well. Church leaders are tired mm -hmm. and the, the next generation leaders are also tired. Mm. And, you know, we're, I was saying this offline, the first thing we do when we're tired, if we're not, if we haven't done the work, is we let go of the things that restore us. Yeah. You know, we start losing sleep. We need sleep to be good leaders. We start, you know, we skip that meal or we eat that chalky bar or we, we don't pray that morning. And so we skip those things. And mm. one of those is caring for the people closest to us and caring for the people that support us. Mm. And so it's happening on, you know, up and down. Those next generation leaders are noticing or are feeling uncared for by the generation above them and sort of saying, hey, it feels like they don't have enough left to care for me and I'm, I'm burning out here. Yeah. But also they're really struggling to look after their volunteer leaders and teams mm. in an environment where it's so critical to be able to do that. So that's happening um, like I've got people I'm chatting to all over Australia, New Zealand, the US, even in the UK, um, that seems a really consistent yeah. theme. Hmm. And it's, it's really hard to deal with. Yeah. Exhaustion is, I agree, massive. Hmm. Exhaustion, burnout is just, and transition, I reckon, yep. are the key ones at the moment. Um. So if someone wants to actually get better at developing younger leaders, what insight would you give them as they want to develop in that area? Uh, it's, this is risky. Go, Brian. <laughs> A plan is better than no plan. Yeah. Like yeah. even if, you know, if you don't want to go and read five books on leadership, I, I advise you do, please do. There's mm. some great books. But if you don't want to put all of a lot of effort in, sit down with the person you're forming mm. and go, what are the key character pieces in your life that we're going to work on for the next 12 months? What are the key skills that you need to build? What's, you know, where's the key chemistry going to happen? Where are you fitting in the team? How can we build your capacity as a leader? what do you feel your calling is and have that conversation. And then, you know, I'm always going to say coaching, do some coaching and get some coaching around. Let's make a plan. Yeah. Let's actually lay this out and let's commit to it together. Uh, find someone to hold you accountable to it mm -hmm. and deliberately form them. It's better to start doing that with as little information as you have now than it is to go, well, when I've got it perfect or when I've got my own leadership together, um, so many leaders that I've worked with that are training young leaders sort of go, well, the model I had was I was thrown into a church in the deep end. Yeah. And if I survived, I, they, I got something slightly better to work with. Hmm. Um, hmm. And that model's no longer okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's killing the next generation of leaders. And we have less leaders coming through. Yeah. And so we can't afford to use models like that anymore. So at least if you sit down for an hour and have the conversation, um, the other thing that really supports this well mm. is coaching communities of practice mm. and some sort of curriculum, you know, even if it's find a book to read together and reflect on together. Yeah. Um, big fan of action reflection in leadership. Yeah. So yeah, that, that would be my starting point. Um, we also run a leadership formation course. Uh, it is called Launch. You can look us up on Facebook or uh, we will have a website very soon. And we actually take the leader and do a full curriculum based around this model. Mm. It goes for a year and they don't come out perfectly formed the other side because they've, you know, they've still got a, we're never perfectly formed, but they've got a really good core and a really good base to launch from. And that's mm why we call it launch that's good <laughs> good little promo there for you brian that's so good how good was our conversation today i uh, just love that so thank you so much brian for just sharing 
your insights and wisdom and just, yeah, and your characters online. <laughs> it was so good. Uh, for everybody watching, it's been good to be with you today and look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at one o'clock. Have a great day.